Testing, testing from Riverheads High School.
Welcome into Riverheads, <laughs> Riverheads Gladiator football here. It is the 2020-2021 season here for the Gladiators opening up against the Taswell Bulldogs. Welcome into our broadcast on YouTube Live, trying to bring this game to as many people as possible with restrictions applied to the attendance. I'm Leo McCray, and I'm with you this week to bring you play-by-play -play of the YouTube Live video feed. Make sure you share this link for your friends and family so they can watch the game this evening or this afternoon. Red Gladiators coming into the season on a 26-game winning streak. They've won four straight state titles. And just as always at Riverheads, the goal for this season will be another one. Robert Casto in his 25th year, he has an overall record of 235 and 59 over those 25 seasons. But winning the last 26 straight, and in those 26 straight wins, 17 of those games coming by victories of 40 points or more. And a lot of success here at Riverheads, as all the home fans know. But those of you listening from Taswell, just trying to update you on where you are. Taswell comes into the game. They come from the Southwest District. Other Southwest District teams are Graham, Richland, Marion, Virginia High, and Lebanon. Traveled up 81 today to play, and we'll have kickoff here at 1 p.m. Looking at what Riverheads can expect this season. They are missing the quarterback from last year, Elijah Dunlap. He is getting replaced by younger brother, Brace, uh, Bennett Dunlap. He uh, filled in last year at the beginning of the season, played very good football, so expecting good things out of the quarterback position. But then you don't talk much longer about the Riverheads offense without talking about Zach Smiley. He is returning as an all-state player, multi-year state player, and just rising up the record books in the Riverheads uh, history annals here as Zach Smiley last season alone had over 2,200 yards and 42 touchdowns. An incredible running back, and Riverheads will depend on him great this, greatly this year. But also along, they'll have Cy Cox and other running backs in the backfield that we'll get to see today, including Cole Burton and Noah Smiley. We all know the Riverheads offense very strong year to year, but also the defense very strong, and they have plenty returning there as well. Colin Armstrong played very good middle linebacker last year. He's back, hasn't graduated yet. Also, Zach Smiley played a very good linebacker last year. We'll see how much playing time he gets on the defensive side of the ball. But the defense will be what we look into today as the offense has a lot of guys returning that we, we know the defense will be where we're looking to find out more. The season, obviously, this year is different. It's being played in February and March, and uh, playoffs will start in April. Only six regular season games for all the teams in the state this year. And the playoffs are shortened by one round. So only four teams from Region 1B will go to the playoffs. So any, any team in the 1B that Riverheads plays in will need to be in the top four to make the playoffs. Riverheads has been in that top four every year the last, for the last while. Uh, but they will have to perform this year to be able to earn that spot. And there's very little wiggle room with only six games to be played. So every game that much more important with four less regular season games. Away from Riverheads, last night, the other teams in the area got started. Stewart's Draft beat Glenver 27-0. Maybe a surprising score for that game, knowing Stewart's Draft could win that game, but seeing a 27-0 shutout of that solid Glenver team in the Class 2 there. Very good win there for Stewart's Draft. They look strong again. We know Buffalo Gap will be playing Luray today at 1 o'clock, the same time this game is going on. I'll be trying to have some updates for those of you watching as we go along. Fort Defiance also got started last night. They played Rockbridge County. They lost 15-0 at Rockbridge. And as everybody locally knows, there was a snowy mess last night, and that was a mud pit down there at Rockbridge. State and Storm get going today at 5 p.m. They're going to be playing their game up at JMU on the turf of Bridgeforth Stadium. I guess they're going to slide in right after the Dukes get done with their noon game. They're going to be playing East Rock. East Rock lost last week to an improved Broadway team. And then Wilson and Waynesboro played last night. Wilson winning that game 35-8. to And obviously all the local schools dealt with a lot of snow. As the Gladiators get ready to enter the field... First, we'll have Tailswell entering on the far side of the field. And we do have fireworks this afternoon, brought by an anonymous donor. We're continuing the tradition.
And as the Gladiators enter the field, it's excitement for all these players to finally get this season in. We're unable to play in the fall like normal, and it's just a great opportunity for these kids to get on the field and play football. I'm sure those of you at home would love to be here for this game, but it's, it's great that we have these kids able to get on the field, play this game, and I'm happy that we can be a part of a broadcast to bring you the images from today's game. And we'll do our best all season one way or another to get Riverheads football out to all the fans. But good opportunity for these kids to just finally get on the field here in this weird winter spring season, kind of fit between the usual winter sports and the upcoming spring sports. So I think a lot of the pregame is different this year with the different stipulations around the pandemic. I believe the coin toss has already been held, and we know that Riverheads will receive Taswell kicking off, and that is just the way Coach Robert Castro likes it. He likes to put his offense on the field more times than not, and he will get to do just that here today. As back deep, we will have number four, Aiden Miller, a speedy return guy, and then number eight, Zach Smiley, who is, again, the one of the best running backs to ever play at this school, which is saying a lot. There's been a lot of great ones. Zach Smiley's one of them. A lot of talent back there getting ready to start this season for the Gladiators. Tanner Wimmer will be doing the kicking off for Taswell as we're getting set here in Greenville. Again, thank you for joining us today on this broadcast. Please share it with your friends and family so they can tune in for the Riverheads football. And I, I will help along here the whole time here with any descriptions I can give you that we're not seeing on the video camera. And the season has started. This will be returned by number three, Landon Leitner. Not much on the return there for Landon Leitner as that ball hit the ground and just sat still. But we will see the Riverheads offense come on the field. And again, Bennett Dunlap, the starting quarterback for Riverheads this year, he does have game action for the Gladiators as he actually began the season last year when the older brother was hurt. And he did a great job. He was 8 for 9 on the season last year. On those first couple games, did a great job leading the Riverheads offense to some good wins at the beginning of the year. An undefeated season for the Gladiators started off well. First play from scrimmage will be a tough run right up the middle for number 26, Noah Smiley. Fullback right up the middle for the Gladiators. and He gains nine. Gain of nine on the carry. Second down and one. Great first pick up there for the Gladiators, getting this offense rolling the way they like. Looked like an offsides there, not going to be called, but this one is to Zach Smiley. He's going to get the first down. About a gain of five for Zach Smiley. Running, running inside the tackles there, failing some space. First down, Gladiators. Let's go first and ten here for the Gladiators. Dunlap back under center for the snap. He'll turn and give it to his two back. And that is Cy Cox returning as a senior. Another very experienced running back returning to this Riverheads offense. These guys have ran in the same backfield for years now. Cy Cox last year, 580 yards, five touchdowns. This is about his third year getting significant playing time in this offense. This time Zach Smiley's going to get the carry. He's going to fight through some contact to pick up some yards close to the first down marker. We'll see where they spot it. And yeah, first down. Great carry by Zach Smiley. Got contact early, fought forward, got the first down. Great carry.
first down carry here. This one will be Noah Smiley. He doesn't have the ball. He's fumbled, and Taswell has recovered right at midfield. Looks like they ripped it right out of Noah Smiley's arms. And a big turn of momentum early in this game for Taswell. It'll be Taswell ball at the 49, and a big play there by the Taswell defense to get the early stop, but that will bring Taswell's offense onto the field. It's going to be a QB keeper there right up the middle, no space. And that is number three, Gavin Nunley. He's a senior quarterback, six foot, 170. One of their team leaders. A little misdirection there in the backfield. Took it right up the middle. Still gained about three yards. Second down and seven. And that'll be handed up the middle. It's number one, Chancellor Harris. Nowhere to go for him as he's he will get about two yards there, but not much space driven backwards before momentum will give him the 46-yard line. Chancellor Harris, a senior running back, 5'11", 186. See if Taswell throws here or if they stick to the ground. And only gives it to his running back up the middle, and Chancellor Harris not going to be enough for a first down as a slew of gladiators are there to stop, and it looks like he was led by Isaiah Dunlap on the defensive side there, reading that very well from the safety position. And one. The Riverheads outsized up front, but as we've seen many years for Riverheads, that doesn't mean a lot, and they're not getting a lot of push up front. These linebackers are filling in quickly. They will go up here on fourth down. Nunley gives it to Harris up the middle. He's gonna fall forward. He's gonna get a first down. Inside to the 40, about the 38. First down for Taswell. Giving the tackle to Ross there from the Gladiators. Evan Ross, number 56. Not only takes the snap, he's going to keep it. He's going to go up the middle. Fains a couple yards there. Inside to the 35, to the 34. Zach Smiley and Isaiah Dunlap there to stop him. Four-yard gain on first, so that brings second and six. Taswell remains in their shotgun formation. Nunley takes a snap. He's going to give it to his running back. He's going up the middle and nowhere really to go there. Gain of maybe one. And that's Harris on the carry again. Harris, the ball carrier. Heartless with the initial hit. We're going to give Heartless the tackle there on the Gladiator side of the ball there. Third, third and five here for the Gladiator defense trying to stop this Taswell drive here early in the game. This is Taswell's first possession. Nunley in the shotgun. Takes a snap. Jet sweep coming. Doesn't give it. Does get a pass off. Defended by the Gladiators, but caught by Taswell. Moving forward. And number two from Taswell, Josiah Jordan, with a nice little catch there under pressure. And then finds some space after the catch to get the first down. That was a quick slant out of Jordan there and had good possession. And he was the only man between him and the ball. The Riverheads defender could not find space in there to knock it down. First will Taswell inside the 20. Empty backfield now. It's going to be a pass in play. He's going to throw it over the middle. And right near the goal line to about the two-yard line, Taswell with another first down. And that ball is caught by Cassius Harris. Sophomore receiver from Taswell. Nice pitch and catch there from the Taswell offense. They went empty backfield, and there was just more guys out there than the Riverheads defense knew where to cover for the pass defense. Safety was coming up, but unable to knock it down. Shotgun single back. And he's running up the middle. And he is into the end zone to give Taswell the early lead. 6 nothing with the PAT pending for the Taswell Bulldogs.
Number 14 will remain doing the kicking duties, Tanner Weimer. Kicks up, and it's not going to be good, and it's going to stay a 6-0 lead for Tazwell early in this ballgame. 6.40 to 2 to go here in the first quarter. And that's what exactly Tazwell would want to do coming into Riverheads is find a way to capture an early lead. And they did it by forcing a fumble around the 45-yard line of their own. And then they went that 55 yards in just a couple minutes there and got right in the end zone. That offense moved very well down the field uh, between running plays and passing plays. And they went they went strong to the pass late in that drive, and it worked for them. And so Riverhead's defense going to find some adjustments there to get that taken care of. But first, their offense will have another chance here. 6 nothing Taswell, 6.42 to go in the first. I want to thank everybody again listen, watching and listening on this YouTube Live. Make sure you're sharing with family and friends so they can listen and watch as well. Looks like Weimer will stay on the kicking duties here. Last time he kicked off towards Zach Smiley, but it fell in front of him. One of the upbacks had to pick it up. Let's see where this one goes here. So it's going to be deeper again. Chapman Smith picks it up. He's going to find some yards. He's going to get out to the 34. Not a very high kick coming off Weimer, but it's it's getting inside the 25, and Riverheads may need to move up to field that with the guys they want. So second drive here coming for Riverheads as they were able to get beyond the 50 last drive with a couple of first downs. But the fumble from the fullback was the end of that drive. We'll see if they can answer Taswell's touchdown. This one to Aiden Miller, speed back coming out of the backfield, and he's got a little room to run. Had the traffic, but moved quickly to the first down marker, and he gets the first down at the 45-yard line. 11-yard carry there for Miller. First and 10 for the Gladiators here at the 45, as they're back at midfield. Dunlap takes snap again to Aiden Miller. He's jumping over guys in the backfield, but not a lot of space to run as he's only going to pick up about one before getting driven back. And Taswell had that line of scrimmage clogged up pretty well. Guys laying on the ground. Aiden Miller had to hop over a couple. Coach Castle upset on the near sideline. Probably some crabbing down front. Again, Nane Miller coming to the left. After about four yards, he stopped right at the 50. We'll be looking at a third and five for the Gladiator offense. And anybody familiar with the Riverheads offense knows once you get to about midfield, it's likely four down territory for the Gladiators. They'd rather give their offense a chance to get the first than punt. But we'll see what first they do here on third down. Maybe fourth down won't even be an issue. Zach Smiley with the ball, little contact in the backfield. He tries to jump over a guy. He's going to pick up three. And I would think Riverheads will go for it here on a third and two. And that's a third and a light two right there, about a yard and a half for the Riverheads offense to continue this drive. Excuse me, fourth and fourth and two. I was talking about fourth down on third down. <laughs> Four thirty-five to go in the first. It's going to be Zach Smiley, and he has the first, and he has more. He's beyond the forty, close to the thirty-five. Taken down, it looks about to be the thirty-seven, and that's what Zach Smiley has done his entire career at Riverheads. He's just able to pick up yards when you need them. Personally, I remember calling a game as him as a freshman against Stewart's draft. I, I don't even think he came in until the second half. But every time he carried the ball, he fell forward and got the needed yards for a big win out Stewart's draft. Riverhead's offense first and 10 from the 37. 
back to Aiden Miller, and he loses his foot. Yeah, slips there right at the 37. So Miller, the ball carrier. No gain. A lot of traffic there for Aiden Miller to try to negotiate, unable to pick up any yards as he slipped. But he was under a lot of duress even when he did slide there. But second and ten for the Gladiator offense. Dunlap under center. Gives it to his fullback up the middle, Noah Smiley. He's holding the football two hands this time. And he's up to the 26-yard line for another Riverhead's first down. Noah Smiley doesn't want to put that ball on the ground there. He went through the hole. Two hands on that football. Able to pick up the first down. Great carry there from the fullback. Bennett's going to pitch it to Smiley. Smiley's pushing his blockers ahead of him, picking up good yards. Six, seven-yard gain. Seven-yard gain there for Zach Smiley. Second and three here for the Gladiators, and they're driving inside the 20 now, inside the red zone. Dunlap's got the play from Coach Casto on the sideline. Offense has been moving well today. The fumble stopped the drive, but they've been picking up positive plays nearly every single play. Fullback's going to have it again, and I jinxed him as there's not going to be much yards there. Maybe one gain there by Noah Smiley up the middle. Third and about one. Third and one play here as there's movement on the line before the snap. We'll see if they call it on the defense or the offense. It will be on the offense, moving Riverhead's back five yards. So now it'll be a third and six for the Gladiators. Riverhead's, like any team, hates to see early or late penalties or turnovers. And we've seen penalties and turnovers already for the Gladiators. Early in the season, but still going to clean those up to win this football game. So third and six, Dunlap under center. He's going to give it to Cy Cox. He fights through some contact. He gets about four of those yards back, but it's going to bring up a fourth and two. And I would expect to see the Riverheads offense stay in the field as we will. As Dunlap's already got the play, and we're going to see... Miller come back in the game there at the two-back position after Cy Cox picked up about, about four yards. Dunlap's going to take the snap. He gives it to Zach Smiley, trying to find those tough yards again, and he has them. He's going to have a first down, and he's down at the 15-yard line. Waited for the traffic of the blocking to go in front of him, and then he fell forward for the first down. Such a smart running back, knowing where his hole is, but then also knowing what that blocking's going to do, where he's going to have the, where it's going to break open for him, and where he can get the needed yards for the first down. Dunlap's going to give it to his fullback, number 24, Cole Burton. Number 24, Cole Burton. I believe Cole Burton's first carry of the game, the junior running back. I believe he's the fullback in the state championship game that broke off a long touchdown carry in the second half. A lot of, lot of experience back for this Riverhead's backfield. Second down play is going to be a pitch to Zach. Smiley up the middle. Can be just short of the first down. We'll see a third and nine for the Gladiators as Zach Smiley was able to get right before the markers before getting pulled down. Third and less than one. And that's going to be the end of the first quarter. 
End of first quarter here in Greenville. Riverhead's down 6 nothing. The offense has moved well here early for the Riverhead's Gladiators, able to move up the field. What's really the only thing that stopped them was that fumble on their first possession. Taswell did a good job at answering to that fumble, coming right down the field between some solid running backs from Harris and their quarterback, Nunley. But then Nunley went to the air a few times, found some open receivers, and they were able to get into the end zone for the only score of the ballgame so far. But again, 6 nothing, Taswell. But Riverhead's threatening inside the 12-yard line here, and they're, but they're going to be facing a fourth and less than one. Yard marker showing third and one. Coming into these football games to this weekend, looking at what Riverheads they've been able to do in openers. They haven't lost in the last nine years in openers. They've won their last nine. The last time they lost was 2010 against Stewart's Draft in an opener. Taswell is one and four in their last five openers under this coach. Coach Jamie Harris, he is one and two in season openers. Here we go, first play of the second quarter. Dunlap under center, third and one. As Zach Smiley's gonna get the football, he's gonna drive forward for a first down. Can he get into the end zone? He stretches. We'll see what the referee says. They're gonna call him down at the inch yard line. He was nearly in there. I thought the stretch had him into the end zone, but. Knee must have been down a little bit before, but still it'll be a first and goal for the Gladiators on the doorstep of the end zone. Trying to tie this thing up early in the second quarter here. 11.38 and ticking. Zach Smiley will get the football, and he will get into the end zone. Zach Smiley, touchdown for the Gladiators. One yard carry for the senior, adding to his career totals here at Riverheads. Big answer for Riverheads, a nice long drive, using a lot of clock, wearing out that defense, getting down the field. Zach Smiley, 42 touchdowns last year, 40 on the ground. Be hard to match those numbers this year in the shortened season, but he gets his first here, and that's the first of the season for the Gladiators. It's gonna be a new kicker for the Gladiators, but it's gonna be up and through as number six, Cooper Robeson, going to do the kicking, looks like, for the Gladiators. And a good job there, putting it up and through to take the lead. Seven nothing, seven to six, Gladiators take the lead over Taswell. We've had a good one so far here at Greenville. Answering touchdown there for the Riverheads Gladiators as Taswell scored first, but the Gladiators answer. And they take the lead by converting that point after touchdown. It's 7 6 Gladiators as the Gladiators look to kick off, and it will be Robeson on the kickoff duties as well. Four, 75 yard drive. Took a lot of time off the clock there. It's at least a seven-minute drive for the Gladiators, and that's the way the Red Machine likes to run there. Take up a lot of time, a lot of running plays, wear out that defense. And that was just a classic drive by the Gladiators. So the wind is going to knock the ball off the tee. We'll reset. Again, good to have football going here, allow these kids to get out and play. Parents down in stands watching. Not going to be kicked deep. It's going to be fair caught by number seven of Taswell, Jared Mullins. It's a backup quarterback and plays some defense as well. Riverheads will allow Taswell to start there at the 36-yard line. 
And we'll see what Riverhead's defense adjustments were made after that early scoring drive by Taswell. Taswell able to score by running the football well, but also finding some holes in the passing game. Moving the ball right down the field and bring a man in motion to the near side. Nunley takes a snap. He's throwing. He's throwing out to the outside, and there is a great defensive play there by Leitner on the outside. Landon Leitner, the junior, read that perfectly. Taswell, I think, was trying to get a block on him, but he moved right past it, got to the pass catch, and brought him down right where he caught it. Still a pickup of four for Taswell. Quarterback's going to hand it off to the running back up the middle and absolutely nowhere for him to go. Minimal gain for Harris. And there's going to be a flag. Defensive end for Taswell with a little extracurricular action after the play. So the play took him up a yard, but the penalty will take him back 15. And that's a... I believe a dead ball foul. So it's going to be third and long for Taswell. And that's just a killer penalty for the Bulldog offense. As they did have third and manageable, but now it's third and long. Everybody excited to play? That was a little, little beyond what was necessary for the game of football there. And penalty came out. Quarterback going to be empty in the backfield there. Nunley takes a snap. He's looking for receivers. Going to move out to the right side. He finds number one, gets him out to the sideline, and he's pushed out by Cy Cox. That was Chancellor Harris. But that is going to be fourth and at least nine. Let's see what the Taswell offense decides to do here. Oh, yeah, fourth and 11. Cy Cox coming up with pressure really good there to knock that receiver out of bounds before he could really get running. They're moving a lot on the offensive line. There's two people shifting, and that's got to be a penalty. It's got to be on the offense. But they had all the linemen come down. They were kind of halfway down, came up, and went down. I think that was to help draw the defense off sides. did not work. But then they had two people shift. I think they were going to shift into a quick kick. But the penalty came out before we could see if they were definitely going to kick the football there. If I was Taswell, I would kick the football here. They're going to wave it off. There was two men shifting. There was two guys shifting after the play was set. I'm surprised of the waving off of the penalty there. But we will stay at 4th and 11. We had number 66 back who's not on the roster. They're going to call timeout. Not the best moments there for Taswell as the penalty drove them back, and that seemed to really throw them off their game there. We're able to pick up some yards to make it fourth and 11, but now what many would consider should have been called a penalty there, waved off for their benefit, but then unable to get ready for this punt, and they have to waste a timeout here in the first half just to get their punt team on the field and get set up right for a return for a for a punt. Riverheads will get their return guys out there as it doesn't look like a quick kick situation now. It just looks like a plain old punt. Riverheads will have their return team in. I would imagine we're going to see Aiden Miller back there trying to receive this punt or Zach Smiley. Yep, we'll see Zach Smiley back. Probably have Aiden Miller over on the edge trying to come in for a block. He's one of the quicker guys on the Riverheads roster. Cy Cox, Aiden Miller over on that far side. We'll see if Aiden comes up to the line of scrimmage. He won't. He'll go out with the receivers, with the uh, out wide guys, just in case they do fake it. Good defender out there. So Zach Smiley deep for the Gladiators. That's 66 ready to punt. He'll get it clean. He'll get it off. And Zach Smiley's going to chase it down. He's going to let it roll. Nice punt for Taswell. Inside the five, down at the one. Could not have been a better punt for Taswell, and they will call it down at the one. Great punt there for number 66 to Taswell. I'm sorry I don't have his name. 99 yards sits in front of the Gladiators in the end zone. As we have 10.31 left on the clock here in the first half. They're 
in the shadow of the end zone here, so we'll have to be careful. Watch that pull back up the middle. And the quarterback's going to keep it. Dunlap trying to find a little bit of leg room. And he'll get out about a yard. Maybe two. Been at Dunlap, the sophomore quarterback. His older brother had been the quarterback the last couple of years here at Riverheads. And Bennett actually did substitute for him early in the season last year, playing well. But he's going to get the start this season. That quarterback, done well so far. Picking up a couple yards there on that play right there. This one will be to Zach Smiley as he's looking for space up the middle. The defense is finally going to slow him down near the 10-yard line. And it looks like he is going to be spot down at the 10, so it'll be third and one from the 10-yard line. Third down and one. Important play here for the Riverheads offense. Wanting to pick up this first down, extend this drive, not give the football back to Taswell. Smiley with the carry. He's going to be right beyond the first down marker, and he's going to fall forward for that first down. And the, the broken record is going to say it again. Zach Smiley does that for you every time you give him the football. Finds a way to find yards, falls forward, and seems to always be successful getting those needed yards for a first down or for a touchdown when you got to have them. Noah Smiley's helmet got popped off during that play, so he'll come off for at least a play. They will send in number 24, Cole Burton, both guys with lots of experience in the fullback position for this Riverheads offense from last year. Leitner's going to be moved over to the left side. Fullback's going to get it. Burton bounces off the first guy, but not off the second. He's going to be stopped after only about a yard gain. We're going to give them two. We're going to call it second and eight for the Gladiators. From their own 15-yard line, 8-19 to go here in the first half. Zach Smiley with the carry to the near side. Towards the first down marker, but probably not enough. And we'll see another third and one for the Gladiator offense. Third down and one. Third and one for the Gladiators. Zach Smiley again. He'll have the first. He's just shy of the 25-yard line, but again, enough for a first down. And the machine's rolling here in Greenville. Two first downs on this drive. Have already ate up three minutes of clock. Crisscross here, Cyclops going to get the ball second, and that means he's moving downfield near the first down marker. We'll see where he's spotted near the 35, but they're going to get the first down on that carry. Nice crisscross play from the Riverheads offense. Cyclox moving forward with the football for 10 yards. Great play there. Looks like Zach Smiley's on the sideline getting a breather. And we're going to see Miller hop a guy to the 40. Five-yard gain. The blocking wasn't quite where it needed to be for him to pick up a big amount of yards there, but he jumped over a guy to pick up about five yards. But he needed to cut it upfield. That's his hole. He came outside, should have cut it up. Once, you know, you don't, you're practicing every day against your own guys. Once you face some different guys, the holes aren't exactly where you might think they would be. That's might would have caused a problem for Miller there. But Zach Smiley back in the football game here, and he's going to pick up the first down with a five-yard carry. 
between and 10 at the 45. Another first down carry for Zach Smiley as the officials are still moving the ball a little bit. <laughs> Dunlap under center. He's going to get the ball to Zach Smiley again. He's coming to the outside, turns upfield. Yard, yard and a half for Zach Smiley. So, second and eight coming for the Gladiators. As we'll get two yards there to Zach Smiley. Fullback's going to get the full ball out of the backfield. And again, only about a yard gain, maybe two. They're saying a fumble, but it, it's got to be forward momentum was stopped. There's no way. There's no way that's a turnover. He was down. Yeah. They blew the whistle because he was stopped. You don't want to leave that call up to the referees. You do want to make sure you hold on to the football, but clearly forward momentum was stopped. The whistle was blown before that ball changed possessions, and it'll stay Riverhead's football at midfield, but they are facing a third and seven as we only got one yard on that play for the fullback. I believe it was Burton there on the carry. Cycox going to get the football. He's going to follow his blockers. He's moving downfield, close to the first down marker, but he's going to be marked short. But it will be fourth and one for the Gladiators, and I expect the office to stay on the field again. Fourth down, and call it one. So fourth and one for the Gladiators. We've got Zach Smiley going to be on the near side, Cy Cox on the left side of the offense here. Quarterback going to give it to Zach Smiley. He's bouncing outside, which is not good, and that's going to turn the football over to Taswell. Turnover on downs. Taswell did a good job plugging the hole there, it looked like, forcing Zach Smiley to try to bounce outside. No space for him there, and that will be Taswell's ball. A 50-yard drive there for the Gladiators that took about nine minutes. No, it'd be less than that. That's seven minutes. There's no way that's right. Not sure how long the drive took, but they got 50 yards there and uh, took a lot of time off the clock because there's only going to be three minutes and 52 seconds left on the clock as Taswell's throwing on first down out onto the outside. He is shaking defenders there. Jacob Mullins dancing around defenders, keeping from being tackled there for a couple seconds. But as more came, they were able to get him pushed out of bounds and limit that gain to about three yards. So again, about 328 left on the clock here in the first half. Riverhead's leading seven to six. Quarterback gonna keep it. He's gonna try to run up the middle. He's gonna get some yardage there, but not a first, but he'll be right at the 45. And he'll be short by about two yards. So third and two coming for Taswell. As Isaiah Dunlap was there on the tackle. Big play here for the Riverheads defense trying to get this football back. Quarterback's going to keep it. Again, run up the middle. Nowhere to go. Great read by number nine of the Riverheads defense, Caden Cook Cash, the freshman. Getting in there, making a big play. Caden Cook, a successful wrestler. He just got done last weekend with state wrestling. Now he's on the football field making a big play there for the Riverheads defense. For, seen a play of fourth and two here for Taswell as it looks like they're going to let some clock tick and maybe use a timeout. They have only used one so far in this half. They have two left. See if they use this one. They have to be. 
But they'll talk about this fourth and two play and allow Riverhead's defense to talk about this fourth and two play as well. 1.59 to go on the clock here in the first half in Greenville. Riverhead's leading seven to six. Taswell scored first, Riverhead's answered, and then we've traded possession since. Taswell's making some good plays today on the defense side of the ball, forcing a turnover, also getting a stop at midfield. Good job on special teams. Really great punt on their second possession as it was about a 60-yard punt, and they got it down to all the way down at the one-yard line, leaving Riverheads with a full football field in front of them. So some plays in particular for Taswell that have really helped them there from their defense and special teams. Of course, their offense able to get in the end zone and have this tight ball game here late in the first half. Riverheads looking for a big defensive play of their own here. Fourth and two, as they want to get this stop, get this Taswell offense off the field, and maybe try to get the ball in the end zone again themselves. But first, they got to get this stop. Quarterback's going to take the shotgun. He's going to give it to his full running back, and he's going to get the first. He got contact right at the first down marker and able to fall forward for the first down. But now we will be watching the clock with 1.53, and that clock will start ticking as soon as the official tells it to. As it's first and ten, Taswell from the 43-yard line, now they're looking to score before the half. Again, clock ticking. Quarterback's going to keep it. He's going to throw it out to the left side to Harris. He catches it one-handed and picks up some decent yardage there. Five-yard gain off the quick little pass out to the low flat. He cut it back up into the middle of the field. And he gets brought down for a five-yard gain. Chancellor Harris there on that pass reception. 108 and ticking on the clock, second and six. He's throwing. He's looking downfield. Defender there this time for the Gladiators. No flags. Number five for the Gladiators. Ryan Ferris doing a good job sticking an arm in and breaking up that pass reception. Big play there by the defensive backfield when they needed it. The third and six. That will stop the clock at 56 seconds for Taswell. As they're going to, all the outside guys getting the play called into them as they get set up here for third and six. Shotgun snap, jet sweep coming. Do not give it to him, but he will run up the middle, and that'll keep the clock ticking here. 35-yard line, he's going to be three yards short of the first down. Fourth and three coming, clock ticking, 44 seconds. Yeah. From Riverheads here, I let that clock run as long as Taswell wants it to. Try to find the stop here, but even knowing you might get it with little play time left, 20 seconds on the play clock, 27 seconds on the game clock. They go ahead and snap it. Pressure coming up the middle. Quarterback keeps it. He's going to get the first. He's still got some space, and he's down to the 16-yard line with 16 seconds to go in the first half. Clock stopped as they moved the chains. Taswell looking like they might try to down the football, save the timeout. And they do just that. Stop the clock with 14 seconds to go. First and 10 for, or now it'll be second and 10 for Taswell from the 17-yard line. Seven to six, Taswell is trailing, trying to find a way to take the lead with minimal time left here in the first half. Great play there by Taswell as the quarterback had pressure, stepped up, and then decided to run the football, and he saw the whole field as he went down and able to pick up big yardage, going from about the 40 to inside the 20. Great play there by the quarterback with his feet. Takes the snap here. He's looking for pass. He's looking downfield. Under a lot of pressure, he's not going to be able to throw it. He's brought down the back of they got to use their timeout. Yeah, they do. Five seconds left on the clock. So it'll be third down for Taswell, but what's constraining them worse here is the five seconds on the clock. This looks to probably be the last play of the half. 
The kicker looks to be coming out of the field. It looks like they're going to try to kick a field goal. Snap is going to be at the 19-yard line. But they're definitely setting up for a kick here. Quarterback does appear to be the holder. Number three, Gavin Nunley there. Looks to be the holder, so you do have to watch everything here if you're Riverheads. Probably send some pressure from the outside. See if you can hurry the kick along or at least make them think it's coming. Or best case scenario, get in there. But you do have to watch that quarterback doing the holding because he can catch that snap and stand up and do something else with it. Riverhead's pretty much just playing a defense here. They're going to probably concede the kick to a point. They will kick it. It's up. And it's good. And there's no time on the clock. Taswell will have the lead going into halftime as it will be 9-7 to seven, Taswell. Good effort by Taswell to find some points before the end of the half. As we're headed to halftime again, 9-7. to seven. Taswell with the lead. Taswell scores first. Riverheads answers with a touchdown of their own. But Taswell gets the field goal at the end of the half to take the lead as we head into halftime. We're going to leave you with the audio for a few minutes here. We'll be back with some halftime talk, and we'll start the second half here after a little break.
All right, welcome back to the Riverheads Gladiators versus Tazewell Bulldogs season opener here in high school football. We're in Greenville today at Riverheads High School for a good one so far as Tazewell has the halftime lead. Nine to seven as we're about three minutes away from getting going again. I guess they do add that time back on the clock. But we're going to get started here soon as Tazewell has gone down to the school for halftime. Riverhead's in their field house. Quick score update from around the way here. We have a 0-0 tie over at Buffalo Gap as they're taking on Lorraine today. It's a big time 2B matchup. Excuse me, Buffalo Gap was supposed to play Bath County this week, and then Bath County had to – they did get to play early in the week, but they had some injuries and sickness that they had to deal with, and they were going to be unable to play at Buffalo Gap today. So Gap searched for some new opponents, and they were able to find one in Luray, as Luray and Page, I believe, were canceled, opening up a spot for Luray. So a 0-0 tie in that ball game. I think both teams – reported by uh, Patrick Height on Twitter saying that both teams had gotten down to about the 15 – uh, but both defenses came up with stops. So that's an interesting score over there. Uh, Luray definitely looks to be a strong team in, in Class 2B, uh, particularly a Region 2B. Buffalo Gap made the playoffs there in Class in Region 2B, but they're hoping for playoffs this year with a smaller playoff field, and a win against Luray could really go a long way towards that for the Bison. But here at Riverheads, it's a 9-7 to seven ball game. Tazwell able to get on the scoreboard first after they forced a fumble on Riverheads' first possession. Tazwell went down the field with some good runs and went to the air a few times, and they got into the end zone first. A failed PAT made the score 6 nothing. Tazwell. After a couple traded, or actually Riverheads answered immediately. Riverheads came right down the field with a long drive that actually went into the second quarter. And Riverheads opened the second quarter there with a score. Zach Smiley getting the end zone there, and they took the lead 7-6. to six. Then a couple traded possessions. Taswell moving the ball uh, to midfield, but then a penalty stopping that drive. They had a magnificent punt down inside the five, down to the one-yard line. Riverheads did get coming out of the end zone there, but it was able to get to about the 50 before they turned the ball over on down. Taswell then... Went down the field with minimal time. And at some moments he thought they might let the clock run. and other moments they were fighting against the clock. But they were able to get down to the uh, scoring area there and kicked a nice field goal there right before the half to take the lead. And actually, as the ball went through the uprights, the clock ran out. And that's what gives us the 9-7 score here in Greenville. Riverhead's already back on the field warming up as Taswell is going to get Back up on top of the hill here, and they're going to get ready to start the second half. I think we have about two, three minutes before we get started here. The clock says zero, but I know they have that automatic add-on time. So a tight game here in Greenville, and a lot of scores this first week have kind of been surprising scores. Uh, you know, I, I talked to, when we came back on air here, uh, about Stuart Straff beating Glenburg. Not a surprise Stuart Straff won that game last night. It was a little surprise they won 27-0. Is Stuart Straff as strong as they were last year? Last year they went all the way to the state championship game, falling short of that championship, falling to Appomattox. But a very strong team last year. Their only loss is coming to Riverheads in the regular season finale and in that state championship game. Is Stuart Straff priming for another run there? Other surprising scores in the area uh, this past week, early in the week, East Rock and Broadway play in. Everybody figured East Rock was up to their normal amount of success this year, but falling to Broadway, they played that game at JMU. Broadway has not been uh, finding a lot of wins out there these last couple of years, so that win against East Rock, a little eye-opening there, and makes us wonder, is Broadway really good? Is East Rock not near as good, or is it somewhere in the middle? I, I would bet it's somewhere in the middle between those two teams. And uh, like I said over there, surprised that it's a 0-0 score for Luray and Buffalo Gap. Uh, you know, Buffalo Gap was hoping to have their defense return very strong this year with a lot of good guys on that side of the ball. Uh, are missing some key opponent uh, components on the offensive side. and They haven't gotten on the scoreboard, but a 0-0 game there is good news for the Bison. 
as Lorray returns so many players from a team that has gone deep in the playoffs these last couple of years out of Region 2B. Lorray looking to probably be one of the favorites in Region 2B. Maybe East Rock is who you would talk about from those bull run teams. East Rock not playing a bull run schedule this year. They're going to play a lot of those Valley District schools. But Buffalo Gap making the playoffs last year, I believe, is an eight seed. Uh, it's good, good sign if they're holding tight with Lorray. Even though it's the first game of the season, still something to build off of the rest of the year for the Bison. But we're going to get ready for action here in Greenville as Riverheads is going to get back to the sideline, get ready to go. Taswell will get the ball first, making that score before halftime even that much more important as they want to extend their lead against the Gladiators here. Not something we're used to seeing here at Riverheads as uh, a lot of teams come in here looking for victories and leave without them. Riverhead's on a 26-game winning streak and have won many of those games by 40 points or more, but this one looks to be a lot tighter than that today. We'll see how Riverhead's does here in the second half. Staple of this Riverhead's dynasty has been how they're able to wear people out in the second half. Will we see the Gladiators continue to pour on that red machine offense that just wears that defensive down? Will we see Taswell step up to that and, and withstand the, the pressure coming from Riverhead's offense and, and the drilling play after play, four yards and a cloud of dust mentality? Or we see them wear out as we've seen so many teams do here in Greenville. So we'll start here the second half, 12 minutes on the clock for this third quarter. So second half's gonna start. Nine to seven, Taswell leads. Robeson with the kick, kicks it a bit deeper this time, and it's towards the sideline. The, he touched it. He touched it. They threw the flag, but it definitely looked like the receiver touched it before it went out of bounds. But they're calling the penalty against Riverheads for kicking it off out of bounds. The receiver no doubt touched that football. But that will have the officials move this ball up from the point it went out of bounds to the designated spot here at the 35. And that's just a incorrect application of the rule. Is that the nice way of saying it? <laughs> All right, first and 10 for Taswell as they lead nine to seven. They're gonna give it to number two, Jordan on the reverse and he's got nowhere to go. Riverhead's defense back there, driving him back further, but he reverses field and he gets that back to the sideline. He started on, it'll be for a loss, but he ran 40 yards to lose two in a exciting play for Taswell there on first down. But the Riverhead's defense all over the play on the jet sweep coming over to the near side nowhere to go and he retreated ground where he maybe should have just gone down but he was able to get back towards the line of scrimmage to only lose two yards riverhead's defense very good there on first down reading that play correctly mullins on second and 12 in the shotgun jordan coming into motion and they're gonna have to call a timeout here on their second play of the second half they might want to keep it a little more simple. Timeout for Taswell. That'll be their first of the second half. So not a very smooth start here for Taswell as they start the second half with the lead. They're facing a second and 12. That first down play sniffed out perfectly by the Riverheads defense. Taswell did all they could just to lose two yards. And then having to call a timeout before the second down play here. So already one timeout out of the way. Second and 10 for Nunley. In the shotgun. Gets snapped clean. Keeps it. Tries to throw it. It's popped out in the air by the Riverheads. He visits turnover. Zach Smiley with the interception. 
Absolute perfect start to the second half for Riverheads. Two plays, two great defensive plays, the second resulting in an interception to Zach Smiley, giving Riverheads the football on the 36-yard line. A lot of confusion from Taswell in those first two plays. And that gives Riverheads the football. First and 10 from the 36. Bennett Dunlap's going to be under center. Crisscross to Cy Cox. He's got space on the left side, and he's to the sideline. He's got a first down and more. And he is going to have a shoelace tackle taken down inside the 10, or maybe right at the 10. Crisscross play there from this Riverheads offense. You've seen it for years. Zach Smiley got it first, then he hands it off to Cy Cox. He goes to the left. He has plenty of space to run out towards that sideline. Picks up the first down and sets up first and goal from the 10. So right to the 10-yard line as Riverheads looking to score here. First and 10, 11.31 on the clock. Dunlap takes the snap. He gives it to Zach Smiley. He's looking for any space. Not a whole lot, but he's falling forward towards the 5. Maybe going to be stopped at the 6. Four-yard pickup for Zach Smiley. Zach Smiley, that patient runner. He goes into the hole there and then finds a little bit of space he can behind his blockers and then also pushes forward, moves his feet, falls forward nearly every single time and picks up yards. So we'll give him four yards on that carry. Second and goal from the six for the Gladiators. Zach Smiley's going to get it again, this time looking to come to the outside. He's to the outside. Touchdown! Touchdown, Zach Smiley. Came to the right side, did not cut up field, went to the outside, found a little bit of space, and under contact, dragged a guy into the end zone, touched the pylon, got the touchdown. Riverheads back with the lead here in Greenville. 10.44 on the clock. Riverheads looking to make this 14-9 with this extra point. Robeson on to kick. Dunlap doing the holding. And got a whistle. And this official is calling a penalty against Taswell. What motion did he make? We're going to call it offsides on Taswell. And we'll try this again. Ropes it on to kick. Clean snap, clean kick. And it is good. Riverheads now leads 14 to 9 as this second half starts off perfect for the Gladiators, forcing the early turnover and then get right down and score quickly. And with 10.44 to go in the third quarter, Riverheads back with the lead, 14-9. Put my coaching hat on for Taswell here. It seemed like they got a little confusing with their offense there on their last possession. They only had two plays, but they went with a extended jet sweep that really didn't work. And then the second play, it didn't seem like they were ready to run whatever they had called. They had to call a timeout. And then when they ran the next play, it was immediately the blocking wasn't there for it. And an interception was caused. If I'm Taswell, I go back to the bread and butter that worked well in the first half and try to keep that ball moving instead of tricking Riverheads here in the second half. Another kickoff there for Riverheads. You know, hit down on the ground about the 20, but great return come from Taswell as he picks it up at the 20 and returns it out all the way to the 50-yard line. He's going to be under the 49. So about a 31-yard return for Taswell as another good special teams play for the Bulldogs. Isaiah Dunlap appeared to be on the tackle, but this will bring back the Bulldog offense this time starting from midfield in Riverhead's territory. Oh, 
not only has Harris behind, beside him back there in the backfield from the shotgun snap, he's going to give it, not going to give it to Harris, he's going to throw it downfield to number two, had a big catch earlier, has a big catch here, and big yardage for the Bulldogs inside the 15, but we do have a flag on the far side line, let's see what that is, but great pitch and catch from Nunley to Jordan, Jordan with two big catches in this football game. That one giving the Bulldogs a first down inside the 12-yard line, pending this flag on the far sideline. I'm not – why are they spotting where the ball is? Why is – oh, they're spotting it here. They're spotting it in the 14-yard line. Excuse me. We'll see what the penalty is. It's going to be against Riverheads with a face mask, personal foul, half the distance to the goal from about the 14. So that will put the ball down at the 7. So it will be first and goal for the Bulldogs. Bulldogs threatening again. They want that lead back. Riverheads will have the defense, the back of the end zone behind them here as Nunley's going to take the snap, give it to Harris. Nowhere to go at all. Number nine from the Gladiators, Caden Cook Cash. Number 36 from the Gladiators. 35, excuse me. Randy Cash in there stopping that immediately. Great defensive play there from the Riverheads defense when they needed a little spot here. Riverheads would love to keep this to be a field goal opportunity out of the Bulldogs. That first down effort is exactly what they needed. So now it's first or second and goal from the 11 after the four yard loss. Nunley's gonna take the snap, he's looking over the middle. He finds his receiver, it's caught, but Miller is there to stop him immediately as Cassius Harris makes the catch, tackled immediately by Dunlap, or excuse me, Miller. But now, third and goal from the three. The passing game working well for Taswell. Third and goal there. Some sweeps coming, but they are going to get into the end zone with a carry right up the middle. Third and goal, and they get in first touchdown of the second half there. That's number one, Chancellor Harris gets the handoff there from the three-yard line, and they're going to keep the offense on the field. Good play call there as there was room to run for the Bulldogs up the middle there. And they're going to talk about it a second longer here. Play caught going down to 17 seconds. Still time to line up here. Looks like they're going to run an offensive play here with Nunley in the backfield empty, moving Harris over to the right side. So trips onto the right with the shotgun snap coming to Nunley. He's looking maybe to run, and he is. He's running, and the Riverheads defense is there but does not stop him. He fights off the contact and gets into the end zone. And Taswell will have the lead again. As they will go to 17 to 14, Taswell leads here mid third quarter. 9 11 on the clock. Taswell now with the lead. 17 to 14. And they came right down the field and scored. Started with a great kickoff return that got them to the 49. But a 49 yard drive goes right into the end zone. Big play of it there was about the 30 yard reception by Jordan. But they keep moving, they get into the end zone. And they retake the lead here in Greenville. Seventeen fourteen, Taswell leads Riverheads. Nine eleven on the clock in the third quarter. After a snowy night last night in Augusta County, field melted off well this morning. Now the sun's out. This isn't nearly as muddy a mess as we thought it might be here today. But we have a good ball game on this good field. Tanner Weimer back on the field to kick as they're going to set it at the 40. Why is he moving the players? Why is he moving the players? <laughs> All right. Weimer on to kick for Taswell as they now have the lead 17-14. 
Smiley and Miller back deep, but it's not going to go deep as it hits the up man. Riverheads does a good job falling on it at the 47-yard line. Good job there by number 74 of the Gladiators, Jason Foster, to fall on top of that football, make sure Tazewell doesn't have a chance for possession. So the Riverheads back offense back onto the field. Last time they had the ball, they went right down the field, scored quickly, a big crisscross run play from Riverheads, took them most of the way, but then they got into the end zone with Zach Smiley's second touchdown of the ball game. Bennett Dunlap under center for the first and 10, and they're throwing, and he's by himself. Leitner is deep, but he makes the catch at the 35. Great job adjusting back to the football. Not poorly defended by Taswell, but Leitner makes a great play coming back to the football, grabbing it out of the air, picking up the first down, and giving the Gladiators the football at the 37-yard line of Taswell. Riverhead's driving with 8.54 to go here in the third, trailing 17-14. to 14. Got a 24-yard pass reception by Leitner. Good job. First pass of the season for the Gladiators. This time given up the middle to Noah Smiley as he's going to gain about four yards on the first and ten play. And we'll set up. We'll give him five and call it second and five. Mr. Bradley's going to give him six. I gave him five. Dunlap pitches to Smiley. Smiley looking for space. It's clogged up. He's looking to reverse field. He's got nowhere to go, and he's taken down for maybe a loss. And we've seen all game that doesn't happen often to Zach Smiley, but the, the hole was absolutely clogged there by the Taswell defense. As number 50 for Taswell, Bridgen will have to leave the field. He's had an eventful game there for the Bulldogs. As now he's facing an injury on the sideline, maybe a cramp. But Riverhead's offense stays on the field. And we're going to keep it at third and five for the Gladiators again to Zach Smiley. This time he has a little bit of space. He does reverse, but not for a first down, but close. We'll be looking at a fourth and one for the Gladiators. Offense will stay on the field. Dunlap already with the play call. Coach Casto calling the plays here on the sideline. Coach Casto in his 25th year here at Riverheads. Seven state titles have won the last four. And entering this season, trying to find a win against Taswell, who they trail here in the third quarter. It's going to be a pitch to Zach Smiley. He falls forward for a first down. And he's inside the 25. That'll set up a first down for the Gladiators. From, we're going to call the 24. Six forty-three on the clock. First and ten for the Gladiators. Dunlap going to be under center. Dunlap gives it to Smiley. He gives it to Miller, and Miller's trying to get outside, but he cannot. Great tackle there by Josiah Jordan. He is the same Jordan that has made the two pass receptions for Taswell on the offensive side there with a great tackle, not allowing Miller to turn the corner and get downfield on the crisscross play. Miller coming to the outside there because Jordan was tracking him all the way across. Miller had nowhere to turn up field. One lap, going to give this one to Zach Smiley. He's got a little bit of space. Moving forward for about six yards. Taylor tackled from the Taswell side there, but that's going to set up third and three for the Gladiator offense. Third and three, Dunlap takes the snap. He's going to give it to Zach Smiley again. Zach Smiley hits the hole. He gets the first down. A little bit more. Down to the 11-yard line. Maybe the 12. Eli Griffey on the tackle for Taswell, number 54 there. I'm going to doubt any relation to King Griffey Jr.
First and 10 from the 24. Ball's out. Fumble by the Riverheads running back there. And they're going to call it down, which is surprising. I think it was Cy Cox on the carry, but Riverheads does maintain possession here. Four-yard gain by Cy Cox, setting up second and six. Still on his feet. Number nine for Riverheads is Caden Cook Cash, and he's going to get his first touchdown. What a play there. Caden guts the carry up the middle under all kinds of pressure from the defense, breaks away from it like a wrestling move, finds his way to the goal line and into the end zone, and that gives Riverheads the lead back. 20 to 17 with the extra point pending. 432 left in the third quarter. A quick answer by the Riverheads offense. Great play there by the freshman. Extra point is up and it is good. The lead now, 21-17. 432 left in the third quarter, Riverheads leads. What a play there by Caden Cook Cash. He gets the football, goes right up into the middle, nowhere to go, and he bounces off some tackles and some contact, breaks away from everybody and runs into the end zone. Great play there out of the freshman. That's what you like to see when the young guys get in. They're fighting for yards, fighting for scores, and he got it. Riverheads get back on the field to kick off back to Taswell. Last kickoff for Riverheads. Taswell had a really nice return of about 30 yards all the way to the 49-yard line. See where Riverheads kicks it this time. They don't often kick deep. They usually do try to kick up to a guy that's maybe not expecting to get the football. We'll see where they choose it this time. It's a deeper kick, Robeson. It's gonna be counted at about the 21 yard line by number four, Jordan. He's gonna go back to the far sideline, but nowhere to go because Aiden Miller, one of the fastest guys on the field, tracks him down. Doesn't allow him to all the way reverse the field and he gets there and stops him. About the 37 yard line. Great play there by Aiden Miller. Aiden Miller getting some carries at running back today, doing some good stuff on defense. And right there, a special teams play for the quick footed player there. He's a junior. But now Riverhead's defense sets up against this Bulldog offense at the 39 yard or the 29 yard line. Throw out to the right side, and that's going to be stopped quickly as Nunley found Alley, the tight end, out on the far side. Clean catch, but then the Riverheads defense was there to stop him before he could really get running down the field any further. But four-yard pickup there for Taswell, setting up second and six. Nunley calling out the plays to his guys from the wristband. Takes the shotgun snap. Doesn't give it to his running back. He's throwing it downfield, and it's going to be caught by number two, Josiah Jordan. He's doing a good job all game going and getting that football out of the air. As his height played an advantage there as Aiden Miller's quick, but not tall enough to knock down that pass. Jordan jumped up there, got it, got the first down, and they're into Riverhead's territory now at the Riverhead's 46. 3.30 on the clock. Riverhead's leading 21-17. First and 10 for the Bulldogs. Nunley takes the shotgun snap, gives it to the running back beside him, Harris. He goes upfield, tries to cut outside, nowhere to go. Beyond the four yards he picked up initially. Tried to find some green space out to the far sideline, but was unable to find any. Again, that was... Cassius Harris, no, Chancellor Harris, excuse me. Both Harris is making big impact on the football game. The Chancellor coming out of the backfield there from the handoff from the quarterback. 
So second and six for the Bulldogs. Nunley with the snap, looking to throw. Pressure's coming. Riverheads is there. Gets past the initial pressure, steps up in the pocket. Now he fans a man downfield. He throws it. He's open. He catches. Diving catch. He's going to be down at the 21-yard line. He failed number 14. Tanner Weimer, who also does the kicking, might have his air knocked out of him. Looks like he might have landed on top of the football when he had the diving catch. He's trying to get up. I, I think he's got the air knocked out of him, so hopefully he can pop back up here soon. But great play there by the receiver. Led. Oh, a cramp. Leg cramp. But a great play there by Taswell, picking up good yardage to drive even further into Riverhead's territory. This ball got marked at the 20-yard line. So about a 20-yard pass play for Taswell. Nunley's done a good job finding open receivers all afternoon. When he's given some time to throw the ball well, actually step into the throw, his ball looks pretty good, and he's finding his receiver's hands. The times he's been able to, Riverhead's been able to make him throw a little worse is when they, that pressure is there at the point of release. He did a great job there stepping up into the pocket, having the pressure fall behind him. Looked like he might run, but then he did find Weimer out in front of him. And Weimer stretched out and caught that ball for a really nice catch. Update from the other side of the county, Buffalo Gap leading 7-6 to six with 8.33 in the third. The Ray scored, failed to convert a two-point conversion. So Buffalo Gap leading in the third. But back here at Riverheads, they lead 21-17 with 2.20 to go in the third quarter. Nunley takes the snap. He finds Chancellor Harris out to the right side. He's fine space, going to get about four yards on the swing pass. Harris with the kick. Harris able to do good things out of the backfield and catching the ball out of the backfield. Riverheads will make a couple subs on the defensive side. Second and seven for the Bulldogs. They're inside the red zone. Nunley takes a snap. Doesn't give it to Harris. He keeps it himself. He finds a little bit of space. Got to pick up another three or four yards. Not enough for a first down. They're going to be facing a third and two. Will the Bulldogs? Yeah, we'll call it. Third and two from the 13. Another defensive sub from Riverheads. Going to get John Wood back in the ball game. Man comes in motion for the Bulldogs. That's Cassius Harris. They're going to be throwing with the Bulldogs. Nunley coming out to the near sideline. He's getting chased down. Gets the ball out, unable to connect with his receiver as number 35 for the Gladiators, Randy Cash, bringing the pressure and unable to connect with the receiver. So now we will have fourth and three from the 13-yard line. Very big play of the ball game here. Taswell wanting to continue their drive. Riverheads wanting to get them off the field. Fourth and three. Nunley taking the shotgun snap with Chancellor Harris in the backfield. Trips left. He doesn't give it to his running back. He doesn't give it to anybody. He throws it, and it is knocked down by the Riverheads defender. That's going to be number 10, Isaiah Dunlap, with another great defensive play. He was standing right where the ball was coming. Able to knock it down to the ground. Riverheads will take over on offense from the 13-yard line, stopping the Bulldog offensive drive there. 50 seconds to go here in the third quarter. Riverheads back with possession with the lead, 21-17. Really big defensive play there for Riverheads. Is that not offsides anymore? Zach Smiley's going to get the carry. Zach Smiley got the carry there, got about five yards, six yards. 
Everybody's got to keep their head. Flag's going to be on Riverheads. There was play definitely after the whistle there between two players, one from Riverheads, one from Taswell. He thought the flag might come out there, but no. Instead, they're going to throw a later flag. There's definitely some Riverheads involvement when that flag was thrown. We'll see if it is just on Riverheads or if it goes both ways. Waiting for the call here. Pointing towards Riverhead, so that's not good for the home crowd. So offsetting personal fouls. It'll keep it second and four. Zach Smiley picked up those six yards to make it second and four. The extracurricular activity is going to offset. I think that's probably the right call. Dunlap's going to pitch it to Zach Smiley. He's going to go forward near the first down marker, and now he's looking for more. Unable to get too much more, but he does get the first. Zach Smiley with a nice carry there. Out to the 24-yard line. Closing in on the quarter here. 16 seconds to go on the clock. Let's see if the here's get another play. And they will. Play was the clock was stopped there for the change, but Dunlap's going to be under center. To his full back up the middle, gets a couple there, two yards out to the 16, 26 yard line. Clock ran out on the quarter. No one's seen that yet. And that's the quarter. End of the third quarter, Riverhead's leading, All right, back here to start the fourth quarter. Riverheads with the 21-17 lead. Riverheads able to answer a score there from Taswell in the third quarter. But we have tw 12 minutes to go left in regulation in this one as Riverheads just getting started on this possession. It's second to eight on the 26-yard line. We had offsetting personal fouls a moment ago there at the end of the third quarter, but we're back set, ready for some good fourth quarter here, Riverheads football. I don't know how that's not offsides. It is offsides. These officials are treating the offsides a little differently today than I'm used to. But that will give Riverheads five yards there, and it'll take second and eight to second and three. And as any visitor to Greenville knows, you don't want to be handing Riverheads five yards. They're, they're plenty fine trying to get five yards on their own. You don't need to hand it to them. Taswell does that there. We've seen some penalties throughout this ball game. But relatively clean when you consider no scrimmages or previous games for these teams. Dunlap's going to take that snap, give it to Aiden Miller. Aiden Miller's just thirsty to find a spot to run in, but nowhere there as the defenders clog it up to the outside. He tries to hop over a guy with little success. About two yards there, third and one now for the Riverheads offense trying to keep this drive alive. Nothing more they would like to have a nice long drive with the lead here, but they're going to have to get something done here on third down. Third and one, Dunlap under center. Cy Cox gets the ball. He's going to get the first down. He's going to drive his feet forward, and he's going to get to about the 39-yard line. Mm -hmm. 
First down, Riverhead. Nice carry there by Cox to get the yards needed for the first down. On the third and one, he gets to the 39-yard line, setting up Riverhead's first down. Dunlap takes the snap. He gives it to his fullback, Noah Smiley, up the middle. Smiley driving the pile to the 45, and he's going to be brought down there. But about a six-yard gain for Noah Smiley, the fullback, straight up the middle. And there was plenty of guys there, but Noah kept his feet moving, drove the pile forward, picked up nice six yards. He's been splitting time with Burton today, both of them producing some yardage from the fullback position, doing a good job. Second and four, Dunlap pitches to Miller. Excuse me, that's Cy Cox. He gets the ball, he only picks up maybe two. Not a lot of space to run there, but does find two yards. And that'll set up third and two. Bennett Dunlap on third and two. He'll gonna give it to Zach Smiley. Zach Smiley coming forward past the 50 beyond the first down marker. And he's into Taswell territory up to the 47 yard line of Taswell. And Zach's gonna come out. Zach with the first down carry, but then gonna get subbed out. All right, Riverhead's gonna give the ball to the running back there, number nine. Caden Cook Cash. He gets forward for some yards there. Another good carry from Cash. He had the last touchdown for the Gladiators. Freshman running back. This is the future. But Zach Smiley will come back right back in. But another productive carry for the freshman running back. That's what you like to see. He'll get more carries if he keeps doing that. Zach Smiley back in the ball game. Dunlap on second and seven. Going to give it to Cy Cox. Cy Cox coming to the near side. He gets about to the 40 and gets taken down hard there by a couple Tazewell defenders. Number 14 and number one. That's Tanner Weimer and Chancellor Harris for Tazewell. Getting a stop at the 40, but still setting up third and two. Two. Zach Smiley in the backfield. Cy Cox will get the ball to the left side. He's back to the 40, trying to drive past it. Not much space to go. He's going to maybe get one, according to the near official here. He might gain a yard, but I'm still going to call this fourth and two. Gain about a half yard as one of the Tazewell players looks a little banged up from the traffic on that play. If they call it a timeout, he's going to have to come out, I believe. It's number 73, Josh Herndon for Tazewell, the 6'7", 315 defensive tackle. It's a big old boy over on that far side. I know Tazewell would like him in there, but they're going to bring in number 70, Travis Brewster, the senior defensive tackle. He's also 6'3", 295, so plenty of size over there on the Tazewell defensive line. But fourth and two, big play for the Gladiators as they want to continue this drive, continue to eat up clock with the lead. Dunlap gives it to Smiley. Patient running. He's to the outside. He has the first. To the 30. Dragon defenders with him. At the end of the play, after it's over, Tazewell gets the ball. That doesn't mean anything. Riverhead's first down at the 30. I don't know what this player is doing over here. Okay, okay, okay. He lost some equipment. <laughs> Says, well, the player there that thought he got the fumble return was coming towards the Riverhead sideline. I didn't think that was the best plan for him, but he was trying to retrieve some equipment. Fair enough. Riverhead's first and 10 from the 30. We're in the fourth quarter, 7-18 to go. Riverhead's leads 21-17. Cole Burton with the carry up the middle. Not a lot. 
There's a lot going on today here beyond the whistle. And that guy's hurt. That's the kicker. That's significant. Weimer playing defense for Taswell is going to limp off the field. He is their kicker, so that's a significant injury for Taswell. As I say, either team gets their kicker injured, I'd say that's significant. That brings in number eight, Brock Alley. Riverhead, second and eight. Caden Cook Cash gets the carry. He's going to bump it out to the outside, then turn it up. Great job finding yards. Not going to be enough for the first, but finding positive yards, maybe three or four yards by the freshman. Cash, the ball carry. Alley on the the latest score update I have from the Buffalo Gap game. Lorraine now leading 14 to 7. They were trailing 7 to 6. They must have converted a two-point conversion on their last score. And I believe they're in the fourth quarter as well. All right, third and four here for the Gladiators. Zach Smiley gets it to the right side. Now looking to reverse field. He does. Gets right to the 20-yard line. And that might be a measurement. We're going to have to see. They lay that ball right at the line of 20, but that's going to be considered a first down by the officials. And the Gladiators keep this drive alive. Now they look to try to get to the end zone, leading 21-17, 530 to 9 to go. A score here would be very helpful for the Gladiator cause. Dunlap takes the first and 10 play, gives it to Zach Smiley. He stays in the backfield a second, then finds a hole, shoots forward to find one yard. Patient run there to find some yardage. But Taswell doing good job up front, plugging everything up and not allowing a big hole for Zach Smiley to run through. His patience there probably got him the yard. Otherwise, he'd have been running up his blockers back. Leitner comes across in motion to the right side as they overload that right side. And then they'll pitch it to Zach Smiley to run towards that right side. He goes towards the outside, then cuts it upfield. Again, not a lot of room to run. Taswell doing a good job. No gain there for Zach Smiley. Third and nine for the Gladiators. Have to believe this is four down territory for the Gladiators. Let's see what they can do here on third. Caden Cook Cash coming into the football game. Zach Miller coming out. So you'll have Cash and I believe Cy Cox at running back with the fullback Noah Smiley. Might see a pass play here. Yeah, we're going to. Pre-snap flag will stop that before it gets started. Man. Don't see that often up here. Riverheads does have the play clocks at the end of the field, and they just did not get that snap off in time. They subbed out Zach Smiley, ran the play in, and just unable to get that snap going. So now third and long. Much different situation for the Gladiators. 21-17, Gladiators lead, four minutes to go, facing fourth and 14. Third and 14. That's what the big number on the sideline says, it's third down. Ball start, offense. Receiver on the far side left a little early. So two straight penalties for the Gladiators. And what was third and manageable is now third and a mile. Riverheads, always good in these situations when things go against them to keep their heads. They don't get too high, they don't get too low. So let's see how they react to this spot. This is one of the most stressful moments they faced in this early season here and we've only played this three and a half quarter so far. So third and long for the Gladiators. And it's a run and play up the middle. Cole Burton with lots of yardage as he's going to pick up nearly everything they lost from penalties but make it a fourth and three. 
So huge play by the fullback as Casual clearly looking for a pass play. Fullback, all kinds of room to run. He's inside the 15 to the 14. So it's going to be fourth and four as Casto thinks about if he needs to kick it or if he's going to keep his offense on the field. I think he's going to keep his offense in the field, and he does. Big play here for the Gladiators. Big play here for Taswell. Eight seconds on the play clock as Riverheads hurries up to the line of scrimmage. We're going to have a timeout from the Gladiators to keep things steady here. So that's the first time out for the Riverhead Gladiators here in the second half. It comes with 3.13 to go as they lead 21-17. They need four yards here to keep this drive alive and keep the Taswell offense off the field. Taswell has fought very well today. Their defense has done a good job even on this drive, stopping a lot of the traditional Riverheads runs. Not a lot of yards found on this drive here by Zach Smiley. Able to fall forward a couple times for some minimal gains. Also got stopped, I believe, twice on this drive for nothing. Taswell doing a good job here, but they need a big play here on fourth and four to stop this Riverheads offense. Try to give them the football back with a chance to retake the lead here late in the ballgame. Dunlap under center. He's passing. He's throwing it to Zach Smiley. He catches it. In traffic, he breaks a tackle, and Zach Smiley goes into the end zone for the third time this ball game. He ran two in in the first half, and now he gets in by the way of pass here late in the ball game, and that might have been the game-winning play here for the Gladiators. Still some time to play, but Riverheads will extend their lead to a two-score play. Great job there by Riverheads. It was well defended. The defender was there. I believe it's Chancellor Harris. Dove tried to knock that ball out of there. He was unable to get there. Zach Smiley caught the football, ran downfield, broke a tackle, and then walked into the end zone to give Riverheads a bigger lead than they had. It's currently 27-17. Riverheads wants to make it an 11-point lead with this extra point. I think this might be another cramp, and it's that's a sign of early season. Usually it's August and hot when these cramps are happening, but now it's February and cold. He's had a big game there, Chancellor Harris walking off the field after that, what appeared to be a cramp. But we see an extra point opportunity here from Riverheads as Robeson's on the field lining up for the extra point. Next point snap is good, hold good, kick is also good, and it is now 28-17, Riverhead Gladiators. Big touchdown there by the Gladiators to make it a two-score ball game here with only 3.05 left to go in this one. Taswell will need to find a way to score twice in three minutes if they want to walk out of here with a victory. Riverhead's doing what they have to do there. A long drive, using a lot of clock, and then finding a way to get in the end zone. It wasn't easy. That, that Taswell defense did a good job setting up many third down plays there and some fourth down plays as well. Riverhead's though doing what they need to to keep those drive alive. And then finally getting into the end zone, I believe it was a 12-yard pass from Dunlap to Zach Smiley. Zach Smiley's third touchdown of the ball game. The other two were by way of run. But that pass reception good into the end zone, extends the lead. So 28-17, 3.05 to go. These two teams will face each other in the future, according to the schedule. As we all know, those schedules right now <laughs> are always to be determined, but they are on the schedule for the Riverheads Gladiators the next two seasons. Next year, Riverheads would travel down to Taswell with Taswell returning back to Greenville here in two years. 3.05 left in this one as Riverheads kicks the ball to an up man there, and he's, he's moved up as number four is going to bring it across the field. And he doesn't have a lot of – he runs over his own blocker. Didn't have a very good wall set up, but he had enough 
to get out to about the 47 yard line. And that was Cassius Harris, who's had a good ball game with another good special team play for Taswell. All day here, special teams have been good for Taswell. Pass play there from Taswell on first and 10. Ball goes right to the 50, but he's going to be stopped right there. As Cassius Harris caught the football, brought down immediately by the Raz Riverheads defense. Nunley found him quickly, but not a lot to gain. Three yard gain there by Taswell, sets up second and seven. Nunley takes the snap, gives it to number one Chancellor Harris. He rolls off a tackle, tries to roll off another, but too many Riverheads defenders get there, and he is taken down inbound, so clock will continue to run as they get ready for third down here. Taswell with two timeouts, 2.14 to go. They need to be moving quicker right now. They don't need to use a timeout here, but they need to be ready to go with the play. And they're still calling it in. Third and five for Taswell. Two minutes to go in this ball game. Nunley steps up, he throws it, it's knocked around by two Riverheads defenders. Unable to be intercepted, but great play there. Caden Cook Cash in on the defense, as well as Isaiah Dunlap. They both had their balls on the ball. Fourth down. And five yards to go. Play of the ball game here for Taswell. Fourth and five. Right at midfield. Taswell has to get this first down to continue a winning effort here. As they're just looking to the sideline. Clock is stopped, but they're going to get the play calls. 11 on the play clock. 146 stopped on the game clock. And Taswell has to use a timeout. They're second right. of the half. Taswell. Again, it just looked like confusion for Taswell. Not the best time to have that. Latest update from the Buffalo Gap Loray game. Ten minutes left in that one. Loray still leading 14 to 7 with the 10 minutes to go. Gap had the ball and they fumbled as they were approaching the end zone. So Gap nearly tried to tie the ball game, unable to do so. Loray back with the football. We'll give you any more updates we get while we're on this broadcast. I know you can find that game on the NFHS network. I encourage you to stay with us for this one. It's, this is going to be a big play here, fourth and five. Ball game on the line here for Taswell. They've played a heck of a ball game today. I'll give them credit. They've come up the road and taken on Riverheads rather well here. But they're going to have to get something here to continue the effort. They're going to move a man in motion. Empty backfield. Nunley steps up in the pocket. He's going to throw it deep. He's got somebody, but no one able to catch it as the wide receiver tries to jump up in the air and catch it. And he is unable to do so. I believe that was Cassius Harris. He actually did have him open there for a moment, but unable to connect. That'll give Riverheads the football at midfield, and they have a two-score lead, 28-17, with 1.38 to go. Taswell can only stop the clock one time here. So things are very much in Riverhead's favor. Just have to close it out well. I want to thank everybody for joining us on this broadcast. We were able to get it in here this week and get something up for y'all. Multiple ways to watch this game. Glad you're here with us on this one. Noah Smiley forward from the fullback position on first and 10. He gets inside the 45 yard line right to the 45 yard line for about seven yards. Most importantly, that keeps that clock running. 124 and ticking. Taswell not choosing to stop it there. Not much they can do though. They'll be looking for a fumble from Riverheads. I don't think we've seen one since that first possession of the football game. Not nearly as sloppy as out here as we thought it might be. With the amount of snow this area got last night, it dried up really well here in the morning. Dunlap under center, waiting that play clock to go down. Under five there. He's going to give it back to Noah Smiley. He drives forward for the first down. 
So the clock will stop momentarily at 46 seconds while they move the chains. But as soon as they blow it in motion here, that clock will start running again. Ball right at the 40. First and 10 for the Gladiators, 41 seconds and ticking. Gladiators lead 28-17 in these final moments of this ball game. And I think they might just be taking the knee. Nope. Yep. <laughs> Usually they have the wingbacks up there. They did not this time. And that was a good ball game, folks. Riverheads did what they need to do to win that ball game. Taswell gave them a heck of a fight. This is going to be a good series the next few years between these two teams. Taswell playing in class two, I believe, in Region D. They play in the Southwest District against some really solid teams. I look forward to this matchup next year and the year after. Riverheads wins the ball game as the clock strikes zero, 28-17. Riverheads gets the first win of a the season, their 27th straight. I don't think we can have a, a handshake this football game. The coaches are talking to one another. Players are waving across the way. It's just a different time this year. Uh, but good sportsmanship here at the end of the game on both sides. Coaches waving. That was a good good ball game. A couple moments of uh, frustration, but that's football. Riverheads are going into the locker room. Zach Smiley is going to be our player of the game here, decided by me. He had three touchdowns. Two running touchdowns in the first half of this ball game, and then the game clincher there not too long ago, about four minutes to go in this ball game, as he caught a pass from Bennett Dunlap, who played a really good job at quarterback today as a sophomore quarterback. But he got the ball out there to Zach Smiley on that play. Zach Smiley gets into the end zone, and he gets the score to clinch the victory for the Gladiators. Gladiators will be back at home next week against Wilson Memorial. I believe it's scheduled for 7 o'clock. One way or another, I'll be involved in a broadcast next week, and we'll put out words of how you can see any of them that are made available to you. We want to make sure everybody can see these football games this year since you can't just walk up to the gate and attend like normal. We want to make sure Riverheads football can be enjoyed by everybody out there as Riverheads has high hopes again this year, as always. Ever since the year 2000, when Riverheads won their first of what they have now of seven, their expectations in state championships year in, year out. Winning this first game against Taswell is the first step to that process. Next week, Riverheads has Wilson at home. Buffalo Gap will travel over to Stewart's Draft, and I believe Stanton will be at Fort Defiance. I know NFHS is scheduled to have all those games. We'll see what other broadcasts can happen here at Riverheads or other places. You might hear me on the NFHS broadcast. We'll let you know. Robert coming up. So we're going to let everybody go here in this broadcast. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for sharing it with your family and friends. We're glad to get the word out of Riverheads football. Let everybody enjoy football on a Saturday afternoon. Friday night game next week. Hopefully the weather will cooperate. Hopefully everything else in this world will cooperate as well. Until I talk to you again, it's been Riverheads football here where Riverheads has won 28-17 over Taswell. See you next time.